How do we lie with maps? Maps, like statistics, can be used in almost any way to and manipulate any way to make your point. So here, I want to look at this map, and I want to uh, for us to imagine that we're in the United States Congress, and we're trying to um, propose that there needs to be a national tornado center. So we want FEMA the Federal Emergency Management Agency to make a national tornado center for quick response, for analysis, and so forth of the tornadoes. And so if we look at this map, we can see that tornadoes are plaguing the, the heartland of the United States the most. Um, but it, And we can see that the state that has the most tornadoes um, annually, and both in this 35-year period, is Texas. And so if we're looking at this map, we can easily say, well, Texas is the most impacted by tornadoes, so we should put the National Tornado Center in Texas. And why not just put it right in Central Texas, Austin, Texas. That's the epicenter of tornadoes because this is what we're seeing. is like the state that's most impacted by tornadoes. The problem with this map is that it is aggregating the data to the state level. And this uh, phenomenon is known as the Modifiable Aerial Unit Problem, MAUP and is a source of statistical bias that can change the results of your hypothesis. So right now we're uh, lying with our map because we're trying to find out where is the epicenter of tornadoes and because it's all aggregated out by the state level we're going to say Texas is, is the place where the most tornadoes are happening. So this is impacting this point-based measure. Tornadoes are happening in single places but we're aggregating them out into the districts or in this case into states. So, um, but if we don't look at, a, at this core plus map that's aggregated, and we look instead at an isopleth map, and here instead of aggregating the data by state level, what it's doing is making uh, zones of numbers. So like here, for example, there was one tornado uh, per year in this zone. But then if you go to this orange area, you have three, so up to three. Uh, tornadoes. In the reds you have seven to nines. But whenever I look at this map, um, you see a very different picture than whenever looking at this map. So here we see Texas is having the most tornadoes. While that might be true that there might be the most tornadoes within Texas, they're mostly here straddled on the border between Texas and Oklahoma. And you can see here that yes, there's a lot of tornadoes that are happening here in North Texas, but the real epicenter of tornadoes is going to be here in Oklahoma. And um, so if you do want to make uh, a national kind of tornado response plate, uh, response center, it sh should be serving this area, this epicenter in Oklahoma, because that's closer to the geographic center of the, or the epicenter of the tornado activities in the United States. So simply because we see something in a map, we often take it like as, okay, we don't look at it critically. We just say, okay, that has to be right because it was in a map. <clears throat> but we need to think about the fact that the maps are displaying information to you and communicating information that's been generalized, that's been simplified, that's been interpreted. There's a lot of, air, a lot of room for lying with the map, and even if it's unintentional, un unintentional um, you can end up miscommunicating with the realities on the ground. So whenever you're making uh, your maps, you need to think about what mode or what way of, of representation is the best for this. So for example, here, a core pleth map using uh, polygons that are colored gradient for quantitative information um, isn't the best way because the polygons are going to cause this modifiable aerial unit problem to make uh, these areas seem like they're prone to tornadoes. You know, South Texas, for example, doesn't have many tornadoes. Um, and then the isoplex is going to be the better way of doing it um, because here we're not, we're overcoming that uh, polygon error because we're not aggregating the data at all. We're instead of aggregating it out by polygon work we're uh, aggregating it out by regions that have similar numbers. And so then we can see here the epicenter is truly around Oklahoma. So summary, don't lie with your maps. And if you're a map user, think critically whenever you're reading maps.